Hello and welcome to week four of the Sack to the Future series. Uh, this is the Denver Broncos fourth game. Um, and we'll take on our rival, the Oakland Raiders. So this is the first matchup in what will become a fierce rivalry. Uh, in real life, the Broncos did beat the Raiders in their first game. And to start off the series 1-0 and Denver's favor. Uh, but after a few years... Hey, good morning, Vinny. Uh, after a few years, we'll see that, at least in real life, that quickly changed to where the Raiders started dominating the Broncos for a bit. Uh, but here in Sack to the Future, let's see if we can recreate the magic that made Denver win the first matchup. All right, let me turn them down a little bit. Oh, they are at eight. Okay, I'm not sure. All right, that's fine. Let's get on with the game. And the Denver Broncos. Okay, so this should be the fourth game of week four. Uh, Dallas Cowboys, Buffalo Bills, and the Baltimore Colts have all played their games. Denver and Oakland today. You see Tom Flores is off to a good start. Five touchdowns, only one interception on the year. Um, after the Broncos game here today, uh, we should also have John M. bringing you the Giants coming up in a little bit here. Uh, just within the next few hours, I believe. Then tonight, the Chicago Bears will be in action against their biggest rival, the Green Bay Packers. And then tomorrow, we'll see both the Browns and the Oilers in action. So there's a good start to the rivalry. Gavin gets in there to sack floors. Yes, always a nice thing to see in the morning, the 1960 Denver Broncos jerseys. So some of you have been following along. Maybe you've uh, been able to get used to the jerseys or the uniforms. Uh, probably not. But um, I did find out that in 1960, so the Denver Broncos, um, which is not uncommon for most of the AFL teams, especially in 1960, uh, the owner was certainly not rich or anything. Um, and so they were cutting corners wherever they could, including on their jerseys. Uh, they actually got the uniforms were used high school uniforms uh, without the socks. And then the socks were actually clearance socks because nobody would actually want them. Um, so I didn't get details exactly how how much on clearance they were, but it seemed to be that they were basically almost free because they're so horrible. Now, in a couple years, the Broncos are going to make a statement by having a public burning of these uniforms. Uh, but for now, this is what we're rolling with. Good start by the Broncos defense. The Broncos defense is definitely the reason that they're 3-0. I believe they're like plus 9 or plus 11 in the turnover category. So the defense is definitely holding opponents to a few yards and forcing turnovers. This is the best of both worlds. The other reason is that man, Frank Tripuka. Or Tripuka. He's up five touchdowns, one interception. Similar to Flores. Good start to the season. Mingo gets the start again today. He's 
pretty much taking the starting job. And there you look, take a look at the offensive line. Harry Ball, the right tackle. Gotta love that name. Mingo and Carmichael is actually uh, the number two running back today. So Bell has fallen down to the third string running back. Did he catch it in bounds? No, he did not. Jessup hasn't perfected the sideline catch yet. There you see the hated Raiders defense. Bob Doherty, louder back, Morris in, at the linebackers. Eddie Macon. Is it Macon or McCone? Uh, either way, I know he is a player that gets a lot of interceptions, so we'll try to stay away from him. Puka comes through with a 16-yard completion. And that will be a first down for the Broncos to McNamara. Now Trapuca, for those of you that don't know, uh, he was he actually retired. Played many years in the NFL. Retired, was signed as an assistant coach for this new upstart Broncos team. Okay, well, that's a busted play, and Trapuca just takes a hit there for no reason. All right. Uh, so now he may have been reconsidering the coming out of retirement to play quarterback here. But in real life, 1960, he was the assistant coach. Uh, in the very first game the Broncos had, their first exhibition game, the quarterback play was so horrible. <laughs> That at halftime, the I I don't remember if the owner actually came down or if it was just the coach. Oh, but the I believe it was the head coach said came down, told him, "Hey, you're still in pretty good shape. These fans paid some money. We got to show them something. Can you get out there and throw a couple passes?" So he went out there, played the second half, and started for the Broncos for the next four seasons. But there, the pressure of the Raiders is getting to him. And he throws his second interception of the year. Not a good start. There's a big hit. Taking out the legs of Tony Teresa. Has 122 yards with a touchdown on the year. Oh, come on. I run the wrong way. Let him get a huge gain. Up to 27 yards now. Uh, okay, Broncos, let's go. Now the Broncos haven't had to play as the team turning the ball over. So far, they've been able to force the opponent to turn the ball over, and that's been working, so I'm not sure if I like their new strategy. We got Don King making the start over Joe Young today. Hardy Brown, of course, Al Day, Pete Mangum, that's all the same. Secondary remains the same with the Goose back there. Bernardi played really well the last week. Seems to be a hot route called by the 
Oh, no, it's not. McFarland with the losing a yard on the carry. Now, the all-time rivalry between the Broncos and the Raiders is a pretty fierce one. Uh, here in Denver, Denver has a slight edge all-time. I believe they're two games over 500 in Denver, but it's when the Broncos are on the road that they really struggle. I think the Raiders have a 10-game advantage on games when the Raiders are the home team. So the defense does come through. And it looks like Trapuca's interception is not going to cost him. Now the game's still to come again. The Giants later today and the Oilers tomorrow are both playing uh, semi-pro teams. I believe it's the... Well, I know the Oilers are. I actually do not remember who the Giants are playing later today. Um, but the Oilers are playing the Texans, um, which are, of course, a semi-pro team at this time. Tomorrow when the Browns play, they'll be taking on the Bengals, also a semi-pro team. So a lot of semi-pro teams in action this week. No user versus user games. But with a triple header today between uh, my channel here now, of course, and then later tonight, and then John M. with the Giants uh, later today, we have a triple header of action. Definitely lots going on in Sack to the Future. Oh, he could not run him over. He rips him to the ground. Okay, let's see how they line up here. Oh, my God. He played the slant. I kind of saw it. I threw it anyways. It's two interceptions for Trapuca, and I think this one's going to cost him. What we have to do is hope the Broncos' defense can stop him to three. Terrible start to this rivalry with the Raiders. Flores takes off and runs for 10 yards. <sighs> First down. Partly on the stop, Teresa doesn't gain any on that play. She would call it here. She would blitz him. Let's play coverage on second and 11. They do hand off. Oh! What a hit. He fumbles the ball. Who got it? Oh, King with the recovery. They give King his first start. And Don King, the promoter of fumble recoveries, does his job. Now, 
now gearing up to lead this offense back out there. Bottom line, he's got to figure things out. He's completed three passes, but two of them have been to the wrong team so far. Buka forced out of the pocket and he'll tripped up from behind. It was an eight yard gain. Raiders are definitely playing a lot of coverage today. Trying to see if Tripuka will keep giving them the ball. Mingo with a nice run to the left side. Four carries, 26 yards. <laughs> if you watch the uh, Colts and Seahawks, they played last night. If you haven't watched it, go to the Twist. Twisted Phoenix channel and check it out and you'll see Mike Tyson's playing for the expansion or the uh, semi-pro Seattle team you get Mike Tyson's in that game and then you got Don King here when you follow the Broncos both making plays Oh, Mingo takes a shot, holds on to the ball, though. Nice run. Definitely seeing why Mingo has taken the starting job and he's not giving it back. He's also the starting place kicker. There's Jessup getting open inside the Raiders 40. Trebuka's second completion to his own team. It's four completions in total, but only two to his teammates. All right, Broncos. Just another first down or two away from field goal range. Hand it off to roll, it gets two yards. Draw from Mingo gets maybe a yard. Actually, no gain. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Taylor blocks, McNair gets the first down. Quick toss to the receiver. Run after the catch, picks up the first down. You see, they call a nice, easy pass play for Trafuga, hoping to get him back into a rhythm. Broncos playing typical defensive game, still no score midway through the second quarter. You go five more yards up the middle. Oh, 
Ugh. Carmichael with 12 yards. Great blocking. On the counter. See the nice pulling block. Taylor had a nice block on the outside. Crow tackles him inside the 10. Oh, almost a touchdown, but Taylor stopped just short. And Mingo puts it in for a touchdown. So the Broncos will take the lead here against the Raiders. Definitely a suspect start for the Raiders, but of course their defense, as usual, kept them in the game, and now their offense finally gets going and takes the 7-0 lead. Well, I'm sorry, it was 6-0, but Mingo, I was just completely confident that Mingo makes these kicks. He does put it in, and now it's 7-0. Broncos will kick it off to the Raiders. Mingo, not a very deep kick. The Raiders will start the return at the 14 and get it all the way up to the 35. So poor kickoff. Give the Raiders pretty good starting field position. Tony Teresa on the day, six carries, 28 yards. But that one all-important fumble. Now, the Broncos have been extremely lucky. Uh, first of all, coming into the day, they've had a big edge in the turnover margin. Part of that is because they've fumbled, I know, twice against the Browns. I think either three or four times this year they have fumbled but recovered their own fumble. And then uh, when the Raiders fumbled earlier, the Broncos were able to recover that one too. So just being quick to the ball when it's on the ground has really helped. Looks like they could be going to the left. Shift some defense that way, and the Raiders guard just takes off. He wanted no part of that play. Just takes off and starts walking to the sidelines. That is a false start. Now he's telling his buddy why he did not agree with that play call. Man, Hardy Brown makes the tackle on Teresa. Third and 14 coming up. And Flores takes off running again, slides before Brown takes his head off and comes up plenty short of the first down. So between Teresa and Flores running the ball, the Raiders are starting to rack up some rushing yards against the Broncos, but luckily the passing game has not been anything to speak of. And that punt is all the way into the end zone. So the Broncos will take over at their own 20. 2.17 to go. Let's see if the Broncos can get any more points before the half. Mingo picks up a nice chunk, gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Yeah. 
No, 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 no. Stupid, stupid. Oh, Trapuca with his third interception of the half. As soon as he let it go, he knew that was the wrong decision. I am just playing like crap today. Man. All right. But Trapuca came into this game. One interception on the year. He's now at three in the first half. And there's Flores completing his first pass. No, 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 no. Why is it this view? Not sure how I got into that view. Usually that seems to happen to me when they go offsides, but there was no offsides call. Not sure exactly why that happened. And there's a... And off a great block on the outside. He could have ran for days. Luckily, he only needed two yards. Teresa into the end zone. 1-11 to go. Trapuca's best efforts to keep giving the ball to the Raiders. They finally do something with it. And it's 7-6. to six. And now it is 7-7. to seven. Tie game. 1-11 to go. I'll be interested to see if the Broncos will go for any more points or if they are afraid of the interception and just want to get it into the half. That ball's pounded into the end zone, so Mingo will kneel it. Broncos will take over at the 25. Mingo averaging nearly seven yards a carry. Definitely not his fault that this game is only tied. Mingo breaks a tackle, stays on his feet, gets about nine more yards. to Taylor and the Broncos will call a timeout 36 seconds to go tight game 7-7 Jumps up and steals the ball from the Raider. A great catch by Taylor, who is the star of the offense. He shows it there with a great catch. A big play by Taylor. That puts him into field goal range. Now from inside the 25, still one timeout. See if the Broncos are greedy here. 
press coverage on the outside. And that's a throw a little bit to the wrong side of Jessup, but luckily not intercepted. Oh, pullback dive doesn't get much. And the Broncos will use their last time out with three seconds to go. Try to get a field goal in before the half. Mingo with the number one jersey on puts it through. And the Broncos do go into the half with the lead 10 to 7. They need to stop turning the ball over to make sure they win this thing. Wow. Looking at some of the scores down below, the Chargers are just destroying one of the favorites in the NFL, the Philadelphia Eagles, 35 to 7. Who says the NFL is better than the AFL? At least that's what's going on in the Chargers' mind. Mingo thrown to the ground. 11 rushes, 75 yards. Let's see what we got. Chapuka pointing out the defense. Let's hope he's actually reading it correctly. And there's his main target, Taylor, again. Chapuka rebounding a little bit. Two interceptions early, but then he threw a, a third one. His completion percentage is starting to climb back up. Raiders safety's back off at the last minute there. And there's Taylor again, fine in the middle of the field. Six catches, 87 yards on the day for Lionel Taylor. It's really between Mingo and Taylor. That is the Broncos offense. McNamara goes in motion. And Mingo picks up maybe two. McNamara, I believe, on the reception, his third reception of the game. The Broncos come out in three backs, full back set. Oh, man. Carmichael tripping over his own guys. Could have been a better play, but he still gets four out of it. Six yards here to go for the offense 
second down. Greer in motion. Goes back the other way. Bingo a couple more yards, setting up a third and three. Inside the 10. Taylor goes over 100 yards on the day. Broncos threatening to make this a two score game, which would be fantastic. And off to roll. That's a big hit from number 57 on the Raiders. Under three minutes to go in the third, 10-7 Broncos. And Mingo gets the blocking he needs, puts it in the end zone for his second rushing touchdown. Dusts off the uh, terrible uniform. And the Broncos take a two-score lead, 16-7. Kick is up, and Mingo's extra point is through. It is now 17-7 Broncos. Uh, in the real 1960 season, the Broncos did win their inaugural matchup with the Raiders. It looks like they are trying to do the same here in sack to the future. Uh, they also started off 4-2. And then did not win another game the rest of the season. If I can hold on to this win, the Broncos will be 4-0 and here in Sack to the Future. Which is a great start. Certainly we're hoping they do not play the second half of the season the way the real 60 Broncos did. Which means not winning another game. Oh, and Flores throws that over everyone's head. Two of five, only five pass attempts for Flores so far. The Broncos have uh, done a good job holding on to the ball after Trapuca's interception. And um, running some clock off. Oh, but there's a wide open receiver. And Flores with his third completion of the day is up to 33 yards now. That might have been the biggest play of the day so far for the Raiders. And Flores is starting to get into a little bit of a groove here. 4-7 up to 46 yards, another first down. And I have to get him off that pocket that he's standing in so cleanly. There's a handoff. A couple more yards for Teresa. He's up to 31. Broncos on offense. Mingo has taken over the running back job. He's having another good game. Taylor, of course, is their main weapon in the passing game. Usually, Trapuca does a better job of not turning the ball over. But that's their formula. Use their use their running back and their star receiver on offense. Try not to turn the ball over. And play what has been great defense so far. And this this year. Try to rack up as many wins as possible that way. 
and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks. The Broncos are losing the turnover battle for the first time this season, but still hanging on to the lead, 17-7. to There's a huge hole, another nice blocking play by the Raiders. Well, you would not think that the Broncos-Raiders game would be an easy task for either side. And it's certainly anything but easy here today. Raiders threatening now inside the 10. There's another handoff. Nice play by Hardy Brown to bring him down after a gain of one, two. Gain of two yards. He has one yard total on the day. That's the backup running back. Less than a minute to go in the third. You have the Broncos up by 10, but the Raiders are inside the 10 yard line. Definitely threatening to make this too interesting of a game. Oh, there goes McFarlane in motion. And they'll go to him, but they throw it to him out of the back of the end zone. He may have had him, and he led him more towards the corner. Pass and nice tackle. And that hopefully will hold him to a field goal. And that's right down the middle. It's down to a one-score game. Broncos 17, Raiders 10, late third quarter. Jack Kemp just pouring it on the Eagles. It's now 35-7. to And that kick's going out of the end zone. Broncos will take over at their own 25. Number 27, one black sleeve, one white sleeve on the Raiders. Interesting uh, uniform choice. Of course, the Broncos cannot talk about uniform choices at all. Total yards, the Broncos definitely winning in that department, but only up by seven in part to all the turnovers. Uh, Carmichael takes too long to figure out which way he's going and only gets a yard. That does it for the third quarter. One quarter to go. It's 17 to 10 Broncos. back just takes the lineman back right into Trapuca and gets the sack. There's the replay it looks like he's got time he comes back or sorry it was the linebacker he just pushes him straight back into Trapuca for the sack. Oh, beautiful pass over the linebacker's head on the money to Taylor for a first down. Trapuca not afraid to throw it around even though he's thrown three interceptions. You like to see that if you're a Broncos fan. Oh, 
Mingo takes it up the middle for another first down. He's up to 99 yards on the game. 15 carries, 99 yards. McNamara's off to the right. Send him in motion. Mingo slowed down a little bit at the beginning, but does get four yards. He's up over the 100-yard mark now. And it's another nice catch by Taylor. Inside the 10, first and goal. Taylor's having a great game. Saving Trapuca out there. Mingo tripped up, gains another yard. 17 carries, 104 yards. Two touchdowns, not a bad day. Cannot break the tackle. Nice tackle by number 57. Roll comes up short. Third and goal from the three. The Raiders all over that play. Mingo's going to lose. Three or four yards, and there's an injury. Who is that to? Morris with his fourth tackle. See the hand off to Mingo. Nowhere to go. Morris takes him down. Somebody was hurt. They're not telling us who. Hopefully it was not a major injury. Mingo will come out after being tackled. Runs to the sideline. Changes his jersey. Puts on the number one and puts the kick through the uprights. Second field goal of the day for Mingo. He has two touchdowns and two field goals. And the Broncos lead 20 to 10. And there's a nice kickoff through the back of the end zone. Raiders will take the ball up to their 25-yard line, 3.48 to go. Broncos need to stop on this drive here. To stop this from becoming way too nerve-wracking. Look at the total yards, 338 to 113. But the score is only a 10-point game. There's Flores, takes off, no one's over there. And he gets a huge gain. Three carries, 47 yards now for Flores. Oh, my gosh. The scrambling of Flores has been the Raiders' best weapon today. Luckily, he's only done it three times. There's a nice throw by Flores. And another injury. Again, they won't tell us who it is. Oh, wait, there he is. Oh, who is that? 34, is that? That's not. I'm drawing a blank on who that is. <laughs> and just a reminder, every uh, quarterback you see in Sacks of the Future will one day be a Buffalo Bill. Except for Johnny Unitas. I guess he never goes there. Look at that. The 
as, Vin, as you see Vinny's comment there, the Bills will go from absolute garbage quarterbacks like they have here in 1960. In the late 60s, they will have both Jack Kemp, who is just destroying the Eagles right now, and Flores, who is having a very good game against the Broncos. I don't know if they can handle that in Buffalo going from not knowing where the quarterback is to having two very solid wins. Oh, and he keeps his feet in the back of the end zone. I saw the receiver get open. I couldn't get there in time. That's on me. Touchdown, Flores. Okay. Now they are taking a look at it. Did he get both feet down? I think he did. They will look at it. There's guy. It seems like he had both feet on when he caught it, but was that left foot in the air? It looks like his toe is down. I think this is going to stand as a touchdown. But you never know when it goes to the ref's decision. And it does stand. It is a touchdown. It was the right call. Don't expect to be treated like the Patriots. The Raiders within three of the Broncos. 2.31 to go. No reason for an outside kick yet. They have all their timeouts. The Broncos are going to have to win this thing with their offense. down. Looks like press coverage on the outside. Carmichael gets a couple yards. Now, as we talked about earlier, Trapuca hired as the assistant coach, so he certainly knows how to manage the clock there. He'll sit there and let it run down to the two-minute warning. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time. Okay, after a scoreless first quarter, they have opened it up a little bit. We are at 20 to 17, two minutes to go. Did he get his feet in bounds? He does get the feet in. Another nice catch by Taylor. Gain at 21, up to 177 yards receiving. Monster game for Taylor. There's Carmichael with a couple yards. The Raiders do take their first time out. Alright, here 
here we go. Second and eight. 152 to go. McNamara in motion. He'll fake it to him. And Tripuka launches it downfield into a whole bunch of traffic. Oh, man. Fourth interception for Tripuka. The Raiders have the ball at the 20, down by only three. Should have threw it out of bounds. Tries to force something. There's a quick completion for us up to 10. For 14. Right down the middle where I was supposed to be covering. Raiders are already across midfield. Raiders off to a quick start here. Flores, of course, will run. Pick up another first down. 80 yards rushing for Flores. Flores takes off again, only gets two this time. Oh, he's got a, he overthrew him. It was pretty good coverage by Bernardi, but he may have had him with a perfect pass. 34 seconds to go, third and eight. Raiders down by three, have the ball at the 20. There's a nice hit by Brown to jar the ball loose. Whew. Broncos defense comes through at least holding him to a field goal attempt. And the Broncos will call a timeout. See if that'll bother the Raiders kicker at all. Thirty seconds on the clock. Raiders down by three, lining up to tie it. Kick is up. It's right through. The Raiders have tied the game at twenty. With Twenty-six seconds to go. And of course, we would go to overtime in a game where I have to get it wrapped up so I can get to work. Okay. Mingo. It's his legs taken out. That's not going to be good for the. Coming drive. Chapuka needs to stop throwing interceptions. Fuka with a little bit of scrambling of his own gains a few yards. Did he get out of bounds? I don't think so. I'll have to call timeout here. Tipped and almost intercepted again. Really 
from start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. The offense on third down tonight. They've hit four and seven. Nine seconds to go. A few inches. Here we go, now. That'll do it. We're going to overtime. And the Raiders will call the toss. They win the toss. Raiders, of course, elect to receive. Time period four and a half minutes long. It's a short kick, take it to 15. All right, Broncos. It's been on the defense most of the season. It will be again. Quick completion from Flores. Three yard gain. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target. Here we go now. Three, 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 even though the linebacker was supposed to be blitzing on the right side, he just sort of stood there. Another completion, another first down for the Raiders. Green play, great blocking all the way across the midfield up to the 36 yard line. Here she goes in motion. Another completion. Floor is on fire right now. They're all the way down to the 26-yard line. I know many people like the throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running side. And Floor is forced to throw the ball away. Brings up second down. It's a handoff up the middle for Teresa. Gets a few yards. Third and seven. Broncos desperately need to hold him to a field goal here. Oh, 
trying to end the game right here. Some of the defensive guys poking, clawing, breaking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. And Flores throws it out of bounds. Will bring up fourth down, fourth and seven. They did hold him to a field goal opportunity. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Oh, almost blocked, but he puts it home. The Raiders. 23 to 20, but the game is not over. Broncos will have one chance at offense. There's Broncos picking the wrong side. Actually, I failed to pick any side, so the default gave me the wrong win side of the field. All right, Trevika is going to have to step it up here today. Or here in overtime. Not a great game with four interceptions. There's a nice run by Mingo to start it off for the first down. Taylor for another first down. Mango gets a few yards up across midfield. And that's your two minute warning. Raiders 23, Broncos 20. Touchdown, McNamara on the deep pass. Comes down with the catch, and the Broncos win the game. Oh, my goodness. Trapuca just throws it up, gives his receiver a chance to make a play. McNamara bails him out. Four interception game, but they overcome it. Trapuca, of course, he's smiling after that. McNamara, the other receiver, makes the play to win the game. Oof. What a way to start off a rivalry. 26 to 23, the Broncos beat the Raiders in overtime. Broncos offense has their best game to date, minus the interceptions. Thanks, Vinny. Broncos remain undefeated. What a game. All right, so again, later today, the Giants will be in action tonight. That's on the John M. channel tonight. The Bears will be right here on Phantom Fighter Channel. And then tomorrow, a doubleheader with the Browns and Oilers both in action. All right, thanks for watching. Have a good day, everyone.